Hey everybody, Steve Nixon here with FreeJazzLessons.com. Thanks for joining me here for today's video. All right, so today I wanna to show you this really cool little chord substitution you're gonna be able to use over a bunch of different tunes. I remember when I first learned this particular substitution about 20 years ago, I was so excited because I had heard a lot of my favorite players using it and never really knew what it was. And once I had it, it was very obvious, but it was just sort of like a light bulb went off when I learned it. So really tasty, very rich sound. I think you're really gonna enjoy this one. Now, before we step over to the piano, I wanted to answer a couple questions as well about my new course, the Jazz Platinum Players Program. So first question was, when is it being released? Well, September 21st, 2015. So mark your calendars for that one. It's a Monday. Now, a lot of people want to know what the difference was between this particular program and some of the DVDs and online courses I've created in the past. And there's a huge difference. So first of all, I am very proud of the DVDs that I've released over the course of the last few years and the online courses. Um, I'm a very lucky man. I get to share music with so many people all over the world, thousands and thousands of people, over 45 different countries, and maybe 50 at this point, I've lost track, but a lot of people, I'm proud of the work I've done. I've, you know, we get to share this type of, of uh, details with people. It's, it's, it's an amazing experience. Now, the thing is though, even with the success these courses have had, I've always known that there's more I could do to help people. I wanted to bring more value and to help people get better quickly. I've been there before. I know what it's like to really want to get good and just, you're just not 100 there. There's things that are missing and you, you know, you love the way your favorite players play. You're just not there yet, right? So, you know, I've experienced that pain before as well. And one of the things that's made just an incredible breakthrough in my own playing was getting a chance to work directly with teachers and mentors, high level teachers and mentors, right? So the big difference between the Jazz Platinum Players Program and just working with like a DVD or an online course is you're gonna get direct access to me through this course. What I mean by direct access is we're gonna be doing this course together live over the computer, all right? In addition, we're gonna be working with a very small group of people, all right? I'm only keeping registration open for a few days, and then I'm closing it down. I'm only one person, I do have a support staff, but I'm, I'm the man behind the camera, you know, I'm the one who's, who's teaching all this different stuff, and there's only so many people I can help at a time, so I wanna keep this group small so I can individually help people and help their playing grow. I wanna make a big impact in your playing, right? So we're gonna be working over webcam. You don't even need to leave the house. We're gonna be working in this small group of people. You're gonna get a chance to hang out with the students, see their playing grow. They're gonna see your playing grow. At the same time, we're gonna be forming this bond here and it, it's really gonna be great. And I'm gonna be, I have a whole system and a whole program that we're gonna be doing on each month. We're gonna be going over different things, but you're gonna get a lot of feedback and every step of the way, you're gonna be able to ask me questions as we're going through the course and I'm teaching it to you. So very exciting there. We're gonna be throwing a lot of stuff in there. We're also gonna be uh, doing live video feedback. So you're gonna be able to send me a video of your playing and I'm gonna be able to review that video and give you critique on it in a good way and talk about all the cool little things you're gonna be able to do to add your playing. I've talked about this before in some of, my, um, some of the blog posts I've written. When I started bringing my gig videos in and little sample videos and my practices in to my mentors and teachers, it was a complete total game changer for me. I mean, it was literally just things that they would point out in like two seconds, I may or may never have found out. Okay, maybe I would have found it out like five years ago, but it would have taken me years to find it and they instantly pinpointed this. It was like a huge ascension in my playing very quickly. So I'm excited to be able to share that type of information with you you as well. And you're also going to be able to get feedback, you know, you're going to be able to watch other people too and see, you know, some of the things that they're doing well and learn from them as you're going along as well. So, very exciting stuff here. But anyways, Without further ado, let me step over the piano. I wanna teach you this chord substitution. We're gonna have a bunch of these type of moves inside the Platinum Players program, but I wanna get you started today. So without further ado, let me show you this move and I will see you at the piano, thanks. All right, welcome to the piano. Let's get into it here. So we're gonna be in the key of C minor for this tutorial, but of course, as a reminder, anytime you learn a pattern in one key, once you understand the theory, just the building blocks that make up that one you know, concept, you can apply it to other keys as well. It's not that hard. 
You just need to know how to think about it. Okay, we'll go over some of that in this particular tutorial, all right? But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about a two, five, one in a minor key and this really cool substitution you're gonna be able to play with it. All right, so traditionally speaking, the two chord in a minor key is gonna be a minor seven flat five. So if we're in the key of C minor, okay? And we're gonna be going up the scale here, harmonizing the scale, right? we're harmonizing every single note of that scale, you're gonna see that the two chord works out to be a minor seven flat five chord. Okay, so root, flat third, flat five, flat seven. Okay, so that's the two chord. Now, the five chord is going to be a dominant seventh chord. Okay, so we have a two minor seven flat five. The five is gonna be a dominant chord, in this case, G7 in the key of C minor, right? And then the one chord, our resolution chord, home base chord, is gonna be a minor chord. All right, now, depending on what type of minor scale you use, you could add on a sixth if you wanted to. It's a really pretty sound. A flat seven, another real smooth, real pleasing sound, or that major seven. Okay, that's also really kind of a pleasant, kind of dark melancholy sound here, right? So. with that minor major seven, right? So, you know, there's options as far as the minor chord, but like I said, minor seven flat five, dominant, and then some sort of minor chord. Now, check this out, okay? For the two chord, what we're gonna do, instead of playing this minor seven flat five, we're gonna just change a few of the notes, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna bring totally new life to this chord. So instead of this flat third down here, we're gonna substitute it with a natural third. Okay, we'll take the flat five out. And instead of the minor seven flat five, now essentially we have a dominant chord, okay? Now what we're gonna do to make it sound a little bit richer and more like a jazz chord is we're gonna add some extensions of the chords in, okay? We're gonna add some altered extensions. So we're gonna add the flat 13, which is B flat, and then the sharp nine, which is F. Okay. Now, for those of you who are a little bit new to this type of stuff, the flat 13 is really just the sixth or the flat sixth, right? Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the flat six, right? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, right? Flat thirteen. So flat six and flat thirteen are the same thing. Okay, so we're adding our flat 13 in here, and then we're gonna add the sharp nine on top. Okay, let's, let me help you get that. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's our normal nine, right? Okay, and then if we have a normal nine as E, if we wanna sharp it, we just go up that half step, and there's our sharp nine. Okay, so there's the chord. So instead of this, you know, our two chord, right? Okay, we're gonna use this instead. Okay, so instead of this sound, D minor seven flat five, G seven, two, five, one, normal one, right? We're gonna use altered two, five, one. Okay, so much more interesting sounding. Not necessarily better, right? But just sort of like, you know, what's better, vanilla or chocolate? Well. You know, it's your opinion or what you're in the mood for on that particular day, right? But it definitely adds a new flavor, new variety to it, all right? And one of the things you want to do is you're growing your, your sense of harmony as an artist here and you're learning more and more about chords and jazz is you want to learn more options, more substitutions, especially in relation to the 251. That is time very well invested in your studies when you're exploring the 251 at the piano. All right, so what this is, again, we have this down and seven chord going into the five chord back into one. All right, so find areas inside your tunes in which you can throw this particular substitution. Go ahead and thumb through a fake book. Uh, take a look at some of the tunes I listed earlier in the tutorial. You could also really just practice playing this chord progression by itself, even without throwing it in tune, just in a few different keys and listen how it sounds as well. 
Now, what we're going to do now is I'm going to play a few bars of the tune Blue Boss, okay? Now, it's in the key of C minor, so it should work pretty well. A lot of people know this tune is a fairly easy tune to play, and it actually has this minor 2, 5, 1 in there, okay? So we're going to see a D minor 7 flat 5, this G7, right, our 5, and then this 1, right? So we're going to see it in there. So first time, like I said, I'll just play a few bars, but the first time through, um, I'm going to use the normal chords that you would hear, right? the regular two, five, one. And then the second time through, I'm gonna throw in this altered substitution of the two and listen how it brings new life to the tune as we go through it. You know, I'm not completely reharmonizing everything, but just this one chord because it's such a strong pulling forward motion chord really kind of changes everything. So check it out. Here's normal. Here's normal again. Now substitution. Substitution. You know, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So you can hear when I threw in this chord how much different everything sounded, all right? So practice throwing this move in. Throw it into Blue Bossa. Find some other tunes in which you can explore this particular move. Just practice the chord progression by itself. What matters is that you try it out and you get a sense of this harmony here, this, this idea that you can mess with the 251, personalize it, and really sort of recreate it and bring new magic to it. All right, so enjoy your practice in this one. We're gonna be talking a lot more about these reharmonization concepts, all kinds of more advanced harmony concepts, neat harmony tricks, so to speak, inside Platinum Players, and I'm really looking forward to sharing music with you inside that program. All right, so in the meantime, enjoy your practice on this particular move, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.